The Oscar nominated film Colette uh, examines a woman who goes back to see the concentration camp in Germany where her brother died at the hands of the Nazis. The film is nominated for best documentary short. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with the film's director, Anthony Giacchino and Ali Stoyar, the uh, producer. And, um, and either one of you can pick up on this, but I wanna start with something that I just found completely lovely. Um, there is a certain uh, symmetry, I think, between Colette's age and this particular Oscar nomination. Can you guys oh. talk about that? Yeah, uh, thanks for having us um, on, Tony. Um, yeah, Colette was born 22 days before the very first Oscar ceremony, which was in uh, May of um, 1929. Yeah, she was born 22 days, right? So she's a little bit older than the Oscars. Um, and in fact, uh, this year, her birthday falls on the Oscars. It'll be Sunday, April 25th. She will enter her 93rd year on the 93rd Oscars. <laughs> so um, you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, we love it. We think it's great. Um, but um, yeah, we were kind of, it was, it was one of those moments where you're like, wait, this is the date. That, isn't that her birthday? It was um, serendipitous. And, um, and I, for one, I believe in meaningful coincidences. That's me. I don't know what the meaning is, but yeah, it was striking. Have you guys told her this? I mean, what, what oh. does she think about this whole thing? Yes, we told we told her. She she even pointed out the twenty fifth of April, and she's um, she she loves it. She she she's uh, one of our first fans for this uh, film. She's uh, she's behind us, and uh, and she's um, she, she loves to 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 remember the whole filming, the how close. Uh, to the crew she is and to Lucy and she has in her living room a picture of the whole crew and she says this is a, a family picture. Oh that's, yeah. that's, that's lovely. Um, so I'm curious you know this this film is is about to me so many different things but it, just from your guys' perspective um, um, how did this film come about for you? Uh, we met Colette by accident, um, just by chance, because we, Elise and I were in Normandy. We um, scouting for, not, scouting for World War II themed stories. Um, and we had a really great tour guide who was showing us around the beaches of Normandy. And he mentioned that he knew a woman who was in the French resistance. She was local, her name was Colette, and he'd be happy to introduce us if we wanted, right? So it was, we, you know, we, we didn't read a story about her or know anything about her and say, hey, let's go find her. It was sort of given to us in a way. Um, at least the name was given to us, but there was a lot of work that, you know, that had to be done before we actually really got to meet her and, and then um, go on this trip with her. And so I, I can continue uh, uh, to, to, to explain that um, Anthony is uh, passionate about documenting his story. And uh, I'm passionate about uh, um, women resistant, which is uh, rooted in my own family. And we, when we met Colette, we found someone extraordinary because she, were, she had very vivid memory of the war. She could talk to us about the war as if she, she, we were there with her. And she was uh, not only a resistant uh, she, uh, during the war, but she was also clearly a combating, combatant woman all her life. Yeah. She had a tone very, uh, very truthful, very frank when she, 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 she would talk about her brother, for example, who was also a resistant and, uh, and was uh, uh, arrested uh, during the war and then killed by the, the, the Nazi. And she was also very tender very caring about her, about us, about what she could transmit to us and uh, have a, a whole experience given uh, with her heart. That's to me one of, the, one of the most beautiful things about this film is that at no point um, does Colette ever feel like 
a victim and that it, it's so much about her her coming to terms with something she really hasn't faced in a, in a frank way. Um, what kind of discussions did you have with her and how open was she to going down this very personal road? Shall I continue on yeah, this? Yeah, and yeah then for you, sure. Mm -hmm. This is typically where um, there's all the, the work of, a, of a, um, a producer, a creative producer. Like it. So it's all about uh, creating a, a, a bond of trust with someone so that uh, this person, this, uh, this subject, this protagonist uh, um, makes the, the, um, the journey not only uh, yours, but hers. Yeah. And uh, we had a long discussion about what it would mean to her to go there, even before we suggested that we would take her there. We, we, we discussed a lot with Anthony uh, over the phone because he was in the, the, the United States and I was in, in France and uh, uh, about uh, the fact that uh, we could only ask Colette to go there once because he, we, we, we knew that he would be a very emotional journey and that uh, 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 she, she, she had never gone to Germany, never gone to a concentration camp for a very valid reason that she wanted to forget. Yeah. And the decision to go there with us uh, uh, had to be hers. Yeah. So the first step is exchange who, who, who we were, who I was, who we, are, we were uh, as a team and what, she would, what, what sense it would make to her to go there. And, um, and this, uh, um, when, only when she, she, she uh, uh, understood that it we would do this with honesty and respect and to pay tribute to her brother, then she started to make the, 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 uh, the, the idea started to make sense into her head. And obviously, then during this process, we, we found this young Lucy who was working uh, on, uh, on a, a book that was documenting the, the biographies of the, the, uh, the French deportees to Dora uh, and uh, in the north of France, in a, in a museum uh, in the north of France. So when we, we contacted Lucy and thought, oh, with Lucy, we could make a bridge to the young generation. And this was our target with Anthony to talk to the, to the, the young people. We thought we may have a story there we came back to Colette. She said, let's go. Yeah. And Anthony, you, you, you want to- Well, I, you know, I, I would just know, Elise is, is right in, in all of this. Um, you know, because I, I was just thinking like, this is, what a story. A, a woman resistant, right? Who had never been to Germany, who had lost her brother. Um, you know, uh, it was it to me. It was just like wow. I w I wonder if we could get her there, and and it was sort of then this long, very long process of getting her to uh, to trust us, as as Elise said. Um, and uh, and certainly Lucy was was key in that also, because there's there's another thing about Lucy that that made um, uh, Colette, I think, you know, help help uh, encourage her, convince her to go. Was that once Lucy sort of came into the picture. Colette also felt that, hey, this is a young, I mean, Lucy was 17 years old when we filmed this, right? Really? That, yeah, 17, the same age that Jean-Pierre was when he was arrested. And I think Colette saw in Lucy also someone that she could protect on this trip. So she would also have this mission to, because, because she knew, I think Colette understood it would be difficult on some level, maybe not as emotional. I don't think Colette was ready for the emotion of it or was, was expecting the emotion of it. But she just thought that this was gonna to be tough for Lucy. So she wanted to protect Lucy on this, um, you know, on the mission that Lucy had as well, which was to, to learn about the past. What I, I find Lucy to be such a, a wonderful kind of conduit um, as kind of like a connection because there is certainly this idea that, I think the film portrays this beautifully of this idea of this not wanting to forget about the past, mm -hmm. even when it's painful. Yes. Um, and 
Um, so I'm just curious, how did how did Lucy come in? How did Lucy come into this picture? Because well, she is a, she's just the perfect person, and her and Colette make such a wonderful team. Yeah, I mean, like there was there was no guarantee that that would have happened. Um, you know, once uh, me meaning like that they would have done so well together. You know, when they meet uh, in the film, that's the first time that they've ever met. So, um, you know, that we, we wanted to make a film like that. We wanted to sort of bring them together and see how that would um, develop uh, over time. But you mentioned this idea about um, forgetting to survive, right? That's, that's Colette's mindset. And then here we have Lucy, whose mindset is, no, we have to remember to survive. So there's this kind of like battle of, of you know, what is the best way to move forward? What is the best way that we, that the two of them could move forward in their own lives? But also I think Lucy represents um, this new generation um, or in fact, really like the idea that humanity needs to remember these things in order to survive. So, so, so Lucy is, is sort of pushing that. Colette is like, no, I wanna forget this. And I think that's a tension in the film um, and I do believe that Colette comes around to Lucy's idea that, um, that, yeah, we need to, it's okay to remember these things. And then that of course is embodied by the scene with the ring when she gives, oh. when she gives Lucy the ring, because I, I kept, when I saw that happen, I kept thinking about how amazing that was also because, you know, that, that, that ring now has another, hopefully 80, 90 years right, uh, ahead of it, whereas it may have just been lost, right, um, if Colette hadn't done that. And I just think that that is a physical representation of that idea of remembering. And, and I, I, I would just jump on what Anthony said to say um, that uh, uh, Colette has no children. So indeed, this, this ring would, would might, as Anthony said, might, might have got lost. Uh, in the, um, but here now it's in the hand of Lucy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about about one specific moment that I thought was so interesting is is when they go when Colette and Lucy go to basically the crematorium. Yeah. Um, I think that you guys made it. I think a deliberate decision to you know keep the keep to not to go in. Yeah, for sure. With Colette. Um, what kind of conversations did you have around that particular moment? Because it really is kind of the emotional climax of the film. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, Elise and I, and our uh, director of photography, Rose Bush, Annie Small, our, you know, producer also who was there, on, like, we, we talked a lot about these things. I mean, we, we, we talked among ourselves what would be appropriate, what wouldn't be appropriate to do. Um, as the days went on, it was clear that this was sort of a tremendously emotional journey for them. Um, again, like I said, it wasn't clear when we were there, um, maybe traveling to Germany. I mean, we knew that there might be there are some expectations. But once we were there, we were very, very careful. Um, and the idea of not going into the crematorium was simply just... Um, a feeling I had when I walked in there myself, by myself, um, and just trying to understand what happened here, knowing that Jean-Pierre ended up there, um, really um, just in a deep level feeling the sadness of that space and thinking that uh, it would be inappropriate to go in there with a the camera with Colette and, and with Lucy. Um, they did allow us to you know, keep their microphones on. But uh, that was something that was sort of like the end of the trip in a way for them that they needed to um, experience together and without a camera, without anyone sort of um, of watching them. I would add also that um, we, we had already um, um, witnessed visually a lot of their emotion. And the fact that there was now only uh, some sound, uh, I, I believe that uh, you, as a as a spectator, you can uh, you can uh, you it it calls uh, in yourself to imagine what what's going on in this crematorium, and then it's uh, it, it's um, 
it's not exactly a morning for even for the people who are looking, uh, uh, watching the, 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 the film and, and the images, but it's a, it's a time of uh, where you can reflect a little bit because you, you have a bit of distance. You, okay. you, you, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you, you, you. Sometimes it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, in music, for example, uh, the, the, the sound is very. It's all the more important that the, the silence is there. So yes. it's uh, sometimes it's important to just to, to to take to to be a bit more distant, to let the protagonist. Uh, uh, feel and, and live, and also to let the, the viewers make their uh, own uh, their own emotion and their own um, uh, making of what's going on. Yeah, and Tony, I, I would add to that to that scene is that when they came out of the crematorium, um, I, you know, because I had the headphones on and I could hear what was going on, um, I was still very much um, in that space of not. Um, of not wanting to um, even go anywhere near them with the camera. And Rose is like saying at some point she's, she's like, okay, so am I going to go up there? What am I going to do? And I, I'm like hesitating. I don't know. I don't know. And then she's like, I'm going for it. And she ran over there and I'm glad she did because then she captured that moment where Lucy asks her like, what would your mother have thought mm. if she had, you know, you know, been on here. And that sort of brings up just the, um, it was nice that you know the whole the mother theme in this was was um, important to us also, but um, we would have missed that if Rose didn't run over there. I'm I'm grateful she did. <laughs> um, I I just want to ask you know this particular genre of of documentaries, whether it's short documentaries or or feature length. Um, they, they seem to be able to capture stories. Um, in a way that I don't think another genre fully can. What do you think it is about this particular genre that uh, makes it so unique? You want to start? Well, I mean, I, I would say that um, I pers personally, I've always thought I would do fiction because I love stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, But uh, I must say that so far, I've always, always made uh, documentaries because the reality that I faced, that I encountered, was more striking than uh, uh, stories that I could uh, write and, uh, and, and film, you see? So as if the reality was appealing uh, me personally more than, than, uh, than a story that would be built. Uh, maybe uh, in the future, uh, this will change, but... Um, Yes, in the documentary, there's a there's this uh, this amazing uh, uh, um, element, which is this is real. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, just just for um, clarity, Tony, uh, are, are you are you talking about sort of World War Two concentration camps? Just like what, you what, know, what I, do you really for the really just just documentary shorts in general? I I love these because. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look at all the nominees in this category are so different and yet are telling such individual stories yeah. that you don't oftentimes get in even narrative features. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think about, um, like think about what the themes of all of these films, right? Um, they're, they're, it's not the most, um, how shall I say, heartwarming um, <laughs> uh category right of um you know out of everything that that is going to be presented um at the oscars and, and yet there are stories that need to be told there are stories i see sort of a common you know even you know even even if it's about something like do not split for example in terms of um just sort of your you're in the moment like right now and sort of this amazing major event that's happening now uh they're all asking us um to not turn away from these events, uh, whether that be the past of, of World War II um, and that you can see how uh, it lives on, you know, to um, what's happening today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would agree. And I also agree with, with, with what Elise is saying is that sort of the re reality is just more interesting. I mean, certainly <laughs> I, I, I agree with that, with what Elise says, you know. Um, and, and in our film in particular, you would almost think that some of it must have been written, 
right? But indeed, you know, Colette and Lucy took a chance uh, with us, and um, and I think su not surprised not only us but but themselves as well. It really is such a, such a gorgeous film. Um, uh, everybody, go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Oscars, and stay tuned uh, for more interviews throughout uh, Oscar season and Emmy season. Um, Elise Doyar, Anthony Giacchino, uh, congratulations, best of luck, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. having us.